What's going on and welcome back to the channel. Today in a DaVinci Resolve tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to pump out your videos faster by using multi-track. Hey, if you're new here, consider subscribing. My name's Josh Haynes, I'm a freelance filmmaker and I bring out videos to help you grow as creators. Today we're talking about editing faster by using multi-track in DaVinci Resolve. Now there are a multitude of reasons why you would want to do multi-track over just a normal edit. Let's say you shot a concert with multiple cameras. Let's say you shot an interview with multiple cameras. That is dang near impossible possible to be able to chop that up and see the actual footage from every camera at one given time unless you're going to go through and shut off each individual layer and look at what the cameras underneath I do not recommend that that will take forever so let's load up DaVinci Resolve and I'm gonna show you guys how to edit it faster using multi-track so of course you are going to need some footage I went on ahead and shot some footage of me doing some kind of interview style setup I have three different cameras two of them look good one of them is just my iPhone, so it doesn't look that great. Kind of just set it out of the way. So what we need to do is we need to highlight all three of these. I am going to right click on it. And right here we have create new multicam clip using selected clips. That's exactly what we want. We are gonna go ahead and click that. It's gonna bring up the new multicam clip. Now at first this may seem a little weird because it's not actually creating a timeline. Uh, it's, it's a new clip from selected. So you have to think about it that it is taking all the video clips you want and putting it in the one instead of having a new timeline where you're gonna have them stacked. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna need to do a couple things. We could change this if we want. Uh, so I can make the multicam name. Uh, let's just do it interview. We wanna make sure that we're at the right frame rate that we shot it at. Right here under angle sync, I'm gonna make sure I'm on sound because I went on ahead and did a clap. Uh, you also have a marker, if you set a marker. Uh, you also have time code, which works phenomenal. That's a whole nother video for itself. Uh, but if you know what time code is, you know how great it is and it's a lot better than doing the clap on screen. I'm gonna go ahead and select sound because that's what I want. I'm gonna leave these three alone. I am gonna go ahead and leave move source clips to original clip bin. So it's putting all the clips in another bin. So you can basically go back and see if you decided you needed to add something else or pull something out of there. I'm going to go ahead and create it. It's going to analyze it, do its thing. You'll know it did a good job syncing the audio if nothing pops up. If it popped up and said it had a hard time doing it, you know something went wrong in your audio. Uh, so right here we have the interview clip and then in original clips, it's actually got the original clips that it's pulling from. Because this is a clip and not a timeline, we need to make a timeline. I'm gonna right click, create new timeline. I'm gonna make sure it's 1080 because that's what I want. You could do this 4K, 8K, whatever you're wanting to do. I'm gonna create one. I'm gonna grab the interview multicam just like it's a normal clip, bring it in here and now you can see that we have it set in there. Now, if we start playing this, you may be looking at it saying, I can't see my other clips, why is this? You can double click on it and then you can bring up all of them right here. I don't like going about that way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shut the inspector off. It's gonna bring both of these monitors up. Let me set both of them to fit. If you don't see both of these, this little button over here on the right may not be selected. You wanna make sure you have that clicked on so you can actually see both monitors. Use this one in your right as it's your main source out. Use the one on the left as if it was your second monitor that's getting the feed from all the cameras. Now, before we go any further, let's talk about the sponsor of this video, and that is Artlist. Artlist is an amazing platform, whether you're looking for music, sound effects, stock video, overlays, effects, you name it, and they've got it on there. I've been using them for so long now because they have such high quality music and sound effects, and they've just recently added Artlist Max where you have multiple plans. So if you just need music and sound effects, you can get a plan just for that. If you're needing everything you can get a plan for that if you're just needing stock videos they basically become a one-stop shop for all your video editing needs if you're wanting to check them out i'll have a link in the description below use that link when you sign up for artlist and you get two extra free months when you sign up for a yearly subscription plan thank you so much artlist for sponsoring this video and other creators just like me now before we start slicing this thing up and making our lives that much easier we want to double check that the audio is on the right camera. So a quick way to double check is we are going to right click on the audio. Right here you have switch multicam angle. I want this to be number two because I know that is my best source of audio. I just wanted to point that out because if I don't point that out, you're gonna actually have different sources cutting and you're gonna hear it start sounding weird because it's coming from different microphones. I'll give you an example right here. 
So let's talk about why I think The Last of Us is hands down the best TV show and video game I might have played slash watched. Uh, I fell in love with it when uh, it came out on PlayStation 3, I believe in around 2013. I wanted to point that out because if I didn't, someone's gonna ask why in the world am I having audio from different cameras? That would be why, it's not gonna sound good. Again, I like to double, triple check everything before I start chopping. I wanna make sure that I am on multicam, I am. I want to make sure that I'm just on video because I've already selected the audio source that I want and I am going to hit play. And then we are just gonna sit here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit number three because that's camera number three. Then I'm gonna go ahead and hit camera number one. Let it go for just a second or two. Then we're gonna go back to number two because I think it looks the best. Then we're gonna go to number three again. Let it sit on number three for a hot minute. If I wanna zoom out, I can hit Command minus on my timeline. You can see we're zooming out. Let's go back to number two. And yeah, I think that looks good. So let's say that I want to tweak these. I'm going to shut off that. I'm gonna bring the inspector back up. And now I'm going to zoom in by hitting Command plus on the timeline. And you can see other than the audio being cut, all of this looks just like a normal edit that you went through. Now you may be thinking, what if I get in a pinch, I don't wanna hit Command Z or go back and have to tweak things. Let's say I don't like this camera angle. I would right click on it. I could go to switch multicam angle right here. Let's go back to number two and make that shot just go longer. Now it's gonna drag that shot out way longer. Even though it's cut right here, it's still a flawless cut. There's nothing missing between the two of those. If I wanted to, I could highlight that clip, hit Command B, and if I wanted to make this be that first shot, we could do that. Go to camera angle one. You can see that I can tweak it and change it out. I did just realize that this camera is flipped for some reason, so I'm gonna go over here on the transform and I'm gonna rotate it. I don't know why that one specifically loaded it in. I think it was because it was a front facing camera on my iPhone. So now we're gonna to go to the color tab and this is the easiest way I figured out how to color stuff. So I'm just gonna look at each camera that I have. I'm gonna select the first camera that's on there. I'm just gonna add the tiniest bit of curve. Let me shut those effects off so we have a little more room. I'm gonna to go to the color wheels. I'm gonna turn the highlight down. Again, this is not a coloring tutorial. This is just me showing you how I would do it. Then I'm gonna to go to number two. Let's do the same thing. Let's bring it down. It's a little overexposed, something like that. We need to bring a little bit more color in it because it's looking a little, little dead. Let's bring the shadows up a little bit and bring the highlights down a little bit, something like that. It's not perfect. I'm not worried about it being perfect. Then I'm gonna to go to my third camera angle. I'm gonna do the same thing, just a tiny curve, something like that. Sure, I think that's fine. Now, because I have so many cuts in here, I don't wanna to have to mess with going through and coloring each individual clip. I'm gonna select camera one, which I think is camera angle two. I'm gonna hit Command C on a Mac. Then I'm going to click that one, hold Shift, click the same camera. I'm gonna make sure I don't have any other angles I do at the end. I'm gonna hold Command like that. Uh, if I wanted to do all of them, I would hold shift and select all of them, but I didn't do that because I don't want to copy all those. Oh, missed one right there, so command and click. Then I'm gonna hit command V. It's gonna paste the color to every camera that is that camera. Then we can do the same thing with this one, command C. We're gonna find the camera angles, that one and that one. Paste it, boom. Same thing with this one, command C. Click on that, command V. I need to go back to the edit page and I need to flip this one around. Now, if we played through that, it's a really good interview that is making your life that much easier. I know this took me a minute to actually explain and go through this, but once you've done this a few times, you'll be able to have this stuff be like the back of your hand. You'll be able to burn through an interview, a concert shoot, whatever it is, very fast. One last tip before I send you guys away is I do wanna point out because they're chopped up, you could go in here and spice some clips up. So I could click on that camera angle right there. I could go to the position. I could add a keyframe on zoom and position, go to the end right here, and then I could zoom in a little bit and move it, the position just a little bit, something like that. That way it kind of adds just a little bit of 
extra zest on top. You can see that it's kind of got a zoom going in. And again, because it's already cut up, we don't have to worry about this one because it's not that clip. That's just a little bonus tip I want to drop for you there at the end. You're amazing. I'm the Iron Giant. Hope you guys learned something DaVinci Resolve. See you next time. Peace.